Hi. Do you like Christmas? The festivity, the frivolity, the stockings? My name is Reese, and I've been a science teacher for 10 years. This is what drives me mad about Christmas songs. Christmas is a time for goodwill to your fellow human. A time to be with those you love around the dinner table. Having the traditional argument over the finer rules of Monopoly or Uno. I love Christmas. The lights, the food, the music. But not all Christmas music is created equal. This may surprise you, but there are many Christmas songs that don't seem to care about scientific accuracy in their lyrics. So we're going to take a look at what I think are the five biggest offenders. If you think you know what they are, if you think you've got a scientific offender on your list, pop it in the comments down below, see if you can get all five right. Right, let's get straight into it. Now I'm going to evaluate these songs. Evaluate is a really important keyword in your Pro, exam. a con, and then your conclusion. How do you feel about this? The first song on this list, in at number five, is In Dolce Jubilo. Now this is the song that we all know, but no one knows the name of it. It's catchy, it's festive, I like how the different parts of the track are all played by the same person, I like how the video zooms out and out and out and out, and you've got all these different blocks going around. If you want to see the video, there's a link to it in the description down below. I love this song. It's a festive marvel, but if you listen carefully, there are no lyrics. Now, I don't blame Mike Oldfield for this. I don't know his scientific background, but he probably thought, no lyrics, can't go wrong, right? Wrong. He bottled it. Every songwriter has the opportunity to write the next scientific number one. He had this golden opportunity, an opportunity many of us will never have. How did he choose to use it? No lyrics. That is why Mike earns his place at number five on this list. Right, number four. I wish it could be Christmas every day. I really do love Christmas and this is a classic, classic song. It's upbeat, there are great costumes. I can even accept the artistic license that Wizard take suggesting that a snowman might like to know something. Clearly, they are anthropomorphizing crystallized H2O, not suggesting you can meaningly converse with a snowman. That's not my problem. No, 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 no. My issue is with the economics. According to an article in The Independent in 2016, the cost of Christmas is spiraling. It is truly staggering. Take a look at this. Now this is considering just a couple, just two people in the relationship and you're spending £750 on Christmas Day alone. Now Wizard wish it were Christmas every day. I don't think they thought this through. If you take the £750 per day, multiply that by 365 days in a year, you get a cost nearly at £240,000 per annum. The UK median salary, according to the ONS, runs at just shy of £24,000 per year. Clearly, this is fiscally imprudent at best, not forgetting that Christmas Day is actually a bank holiday, therefore no one's going to be working. If you have nobody working for 365 days, where are the presents coming from? Who's going to get a salary? It just boggles the mind. There's no way this could be done on a salary because nobody would be at work. It would have to come through savings. And this is where things get desperate. 15% of UK households have no savings whatsoever. One in three, one in three have less than £1,500. Now, don't get me wrong, while it's clearly well meant, ultimately, Wizard are wishing financial destruction and destitution on us all. Science requires a strong work base and a diverse economy, and Wizard are wishing ruin to both. Now, plenty of people have experienced a Christmas romance, and far too often these 
barely make it to New Year, let alone to the following Christmas. This is the story that George Michael tells us in the Christmas smash hit, Last Christmas. 483 million views on YouTube suggests that George knows a thing or two about love and selling records. But I would suggest he needs to revise his human anatomy. The lyrics of this song clearly state he gives his heart as a gift to a previous love interest. Now, aside from being terribly unhygienic, he wraps it up in a note and sends it. Almost certainly not in line with biohazard regulations. The heart cannot be passed on to another without serious and usually terminal side effects. Furthermore, Wham have clearly misunderstood the term double circulation. Humans have one heart with four chambers. The term double circulation refers to how blood flows from the heart to the lungs, back to the heart, round the body, and then back to where it started. Two complete loops, not two complete hearts. George waxes lyrical about how this year he's going to give his heart to someone special. Now, the rest of the song does not mention the return of the original cardiac gift, so we can only assume that George and the rest of Wham believe that there are more than one heart in the human body to give away. This is clearly a dangerous misconception. Teaching science is hard enough without award-winning musical artists putting in misconceptions. On to number two. Fairy Tale of New York. Fairy Tale of New York is a dramatic song. It depicts a fractious relationship, youthful hopes spoiled by alcoholism and drug abuse. A Christmas classic! With a very singable refrain and some wonderful Irish beats in the middle. You know Christmas has arrived when you hear this song on the airwaves. But would it be too much to ask for a little more scientific accuracy? <sighs> right, where do I begin? First, they don't state their units. This is a huge problem in science. I'm constantly reminding my students to state their units and they constantly forget. No doubt because of the example set by the Pogues. They've got cars big as bars. Really? Since when was a bar a standard unit of measurement? Which side of the bar are we going lengthways, widthways? Are we talking atmospheric pressure here? But this is minor compared to their next big faux pas. Mere beats later. They've got rivers of gold, have they? The melting point of pure gold is 1064 degrees Celsius. However, it's Christmas, let's be charitable. Most gold used in jewelry is mixed with other metals to make it stronger. This is why we measure it in carats. This will affect its melting point. Even if we assume they are talking about 14 carat yellow gold, we must still put the minimum temperature required to melt this at 829 degrees Celsius. That is warm. Around Christmas in New York, the average temperatures fluctuate from about three to six degrees Celsius in the day. At night, it can drop down to minus 10. You frequently have snow in New York at Christmas. This is hundreds of degrees lower than the required temperature to melt any amount of gold, let alone have a flowing river of it. Melting points are used to determine the purity of a substance. They are absolute. They are not movable figures that can be fiddled with just to chase a Christmas number one. Now, speaking of number ones, which Christmas song do you think irks me most? Which do you think has got to number one on our list? Plop it down in the comments below, see if you can guess it and see if you can nail some of the reasons why it annoys me. Go on, I'll wait. Remember, 
comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. 1984. The average UK house price was £37,182. The first Apple Macintosh went on sale. The UK was ravaged by a year-long miners' strike. And Britain and Ireland's top pop musicians gathered at a Notting Hill studio to raise money for Ethiopia. Band-Aid was born. Now, I could write a whole video on the scientific inaccuracies of this song, but let's take some of their key problems. Where the only water flowing is the bitter sting of tears. Really? Ethiopia has a predominant climate of tropical monsoon. Where nothing ever grows. Ethiopia is heavily forested, plenty grows there, but the illusion that it is a barren wasteland actually distracts from their major deforestation problem. At the start of the 20th century, 35% of Ethiopia was forested. At the start of the 21st, you're talking less than 11%. 1400 kilometers squared of forest are felled every year in Ethiopia, despite attempts to reverse this no rain or rivers flow. Right, far from no rain or rivers flowing, Ethiopia contributes about 81% of the water volume of the River Nile, the longest river in the world. Underneath that burning sun, most of the country is covered by highlands. This keeps it considerably cooler than the admittedly very hot lowlands. But if you look around the capital of Addis Ababa, you are seeing a quite comfortable climate with average temperatures about 20 to 25 degrees all year round and 42 inches of rain a year. I could go on, but I won't because we've got Christmas turkey to eat. Let's just say that this boils down to sloppy research. Pure and simple. So what can we learn from this? Well, songs are not as scientifically accurate as people would believe. The songwriters and performers rely on you, the consumer, to ignore these major issues with their lyrics. Remember, you have the power. You can change this. Use your purchasing pound, your discerning dollar, your subtle streams to send a message to these songwriters that we will not accept sloppy science in our song. You can change this. If you think one small thing can't make a difference to the world, you try sleeping in a room with a mosquito. If you've enjoyed this video, if you like this more light-hearted content, pop a like down below. Perhaps you might even want to subscribe. That would really help me out. It could be my Christmas present for this year. If you have other scientific errors that you've seen in Christmas songs or any other songs, pop them in the comments below. I try to respond to as many of them as I can. It's really fantastic how many of you have got involved with this. At the time of recording this video, I've got over 100 comments less than a week after posting. So that's really fantastic. Thanks, guys. Your support is absolutely incredible. In the meantime, I hope we've all learned from this. Life's too short to make all the mistakes yourselves. We have to learn from each other. My name's Reese. This has been Counting Bubbles. Merry Christmas.